That your love may abound. That your love may abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, the knowledge of the That your love may itself in greater death. the <laughs> And and extend to development. that your love may that's 
Shall we use the next three minutes just to thank God for answered prayer? Let's thank God. Let's pray in the spirit, thanking God for answered prayer. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We bless your Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We thank you that you hear us always, Lord. We thank you that you hear us always, Lord. This is the faith of the we give you all the glory, God. Oh, Father, we bless you. Oh, we give you the glory. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worship We thank you for your faithfulness. Father God, we just want to thank you for answered prayer. We thank you for the time that we've spent in your presence. Oh, Father, we thank you that we've harvested answers to prayers this afternoon. We thank you that our love is abounding mm. and has continued to abound, oh God, in knowledge and in truth, oh God. And Father, in every good way the Lord you have even established it to be. We yes. thank you. We thank you, oh God. We are so grateful to be part, oh God, of this good, oh God, harvesting the Lord we have done. We thank mm. you so much. The Lord, you have called us to be part of this, oh God. What can we say? And to say, Lord, to you be all the glory. We commit yes. the thank next you, session into your hands. Father, we are going to worship. We are going to praise. I pray that, Lord, you will give us a grace to do it in truth and in spirit, God. That your name thank alone you. will be glorified. Not to please any man, but, Lord purpose is just to give you the glory and to appreciate you for whom you are in the name of Jesus. Continue to reign, continue to be in control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Let me know when you're ready for the praise and worship and let's get, let's get flowing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Praise first, and then after worship, two songs each. Hey, get yourself ready. Okay. Here we are. Says I've got you. 
us know by going to get I got joy 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 oh joy 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 oh joy in my life oh joy overflowing in our lives hallelujah yeah praise god praise god all Mm. right let's take the next one glory 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 Mm. glory no reason to fear Say, Jehovah has the final 
the final the doctor has said Over has the final thing No matter what the truth may say Over has the final thing I have no reason to give I have no reason to give Make my life That is my life I have no reason to think Oh, this is my life The Lord is my life Tell me who has the final say 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 the doctor said, I the the final the the final the I have
Yes, we are, Pastor. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Praise the name of the living God. Let's worship him. Here we go. Here we go. You are great, yes, you are holy one. Holy one. You walked upon me. You raised the dead. Everything written is great. You are great, you are Walk the you walk the you you Everything we teach is great. You are great. You are great. You are great. Oh, yeah. Say you are great. Say you are great.
great. So great. Oh Lord Jesus. We, we worship you, Lord, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. Oh, so great you oh, so are. Great. Doing marvelous things. Marvelous things. We can move about you. We can move about you. We can move about you. Just one more, one more worship, one more worship. Oh, Glory to you. Oh yes, the tremble always at this. Let's take this last worship with your heart. Amen. It's not David. Word. Word. Incredible God. Oh, la yandele mazuta. Oh, la re yandele mazuta. Yes, Lord, we give it all to you, O Lord. Incredible. Anytime we call you answer. Anytime you call you answer. Any door I knock, you open. You're an incredible God. Incredible God. Oh, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we worship your holy name. Yes, indeed, you are an incredible God, oh Lord. Father, we give you all our worship this morning. We give you our praise this morning. You are an incredible God. You are an awesome God. You are a magnificent God. You are a wonderful God. Father, we bless you this morning. We bless you this afternoon. We lay your over there, Father Lord. And we raise our praise and worship unto you, Lord. Thank you, Lord of Lords. You Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father, we 
We bow before you, Lord. We give you all the praise and the honor. We give you all the praise and the honor because you deserve it, O Lord. We worship your majesty, O Lord. Indeed, you are an incredible God. Indeed, you are an awesome God. There is no one like unto you, O Lord Jesus. Father, we worship your majesty. We praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We just want worship you. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the, you the, glory. You the, you the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yahweh. Lebrazaya. Lebranda Labraka Labrasia. Glory be to the lamp of the living God. Hallelujah. What a worship. What a worship. What a worship. What an atmosphere of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 So, just give us the summary of your of the of the worship, please. Pray and just finish it off. We can hear you. Your, ah, yeah, that's better. Yeah, Father God, you know our hearts. We just want to pour our hearts to you this afternoon. We just want to say, Lord, we are in awe of you. We just want to say to you be all glory. We bow before your throne of grace and we say, holy, holy, holy be unto your name. Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Yes, Lord. Say, Glory be unto your name, O God. You, Father, Lord. we just want to adore you. Mm. We just want to fall in love with you. We just want to say, mm. Lord, you are more than incredible. Yes, you Lord. Have anything to say. Lord, we say, we don't know what words to use, but you are, I am that I am. Mm. And you do what you want to do. <laughs> Hey, Father, we just want to say thank you. We just want Hallelujah. to say blessed be unto your name. Hallelujah. For if it had not been for you on our side, Hallelujah. when we didn't know what we were doing with ourselves, you came down on earth to save us. <laughs> and today, my Lord, we can stand and say glory to your name. Yes, Lord. We thank you Lord. that we are glorified together with you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give thank worship. You. Take it, oh God. It all belongs to you. We give it all to you. Amen. We thank you. We commit our next session into your hands. Father, we pray for utterance, for pastor. We pray for mm. boldness. We pray for those of us, Lord, that will be listening. Here, and abroad, online, wherever, let the ways of God bear fruit. 
Let it fall on fertile grounds, O God. Yes, Lord. And let us, O God, become fruitful wherever we are. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you very much, Sister Hetty, for that spirit-filled, spirit-led time of prayer, time of praise, and time of worship. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you all that have decided to fellowship mm -hmm. with us today online. On behalf of me, Pastor Fred Abeka and Lady Patience Abeka and all the leaders of Full Gospel Church International, the London branch, we say welcome to our online church service. Our online church service is being held in this way because our center where we use for our normal church service is at the moment used as a COVID response center. So we are waiting for them to give us a letter and then we shall go back to our building. Even when we go back into our building, we shall still be broadcasting live via Zoom and via Facebook. Let me also take this opportunity. I want to welcome a few wonderful, um, wonderful um, brothers and sisters that have, that have joined us. And um, everybody here is wonderful. Everybody here is special. But when somebody who um, normally does not always join us decides to come and join us, you know, we don't take it lightly and we do respect that. So first of all, let me say a very big welcome to Mrs. Phyllis Pavia, popularly known as Mrs. P.K. Welcome, 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 welcome. I hope you are back from Ghana. I can see the you know, the old in sunshine um, showing for me. I believe that you enjoy the sunshine to the hill and you enjoy also some luxurious fufu, which is a local delicacy, a bank wine, which is palm nut, and maybe some inkati wine or katibe, which actually is peanut butter soup. I'm sure probably also not only that, you also enjoy maybe some what we call kedewe, which is fried plantain steamed in ginger with some peanuts. That used to be my favorite and it's still my favorite. Praise God. Hallelujah. So thank you very much, Mrs. Speaker, and our love to your wonderful husband in the person of Mr. Mark Kwabia. Great to see you. And I pray that the service will be a joy to you as well. I will not also wish time and welcome also in our midst in the person of the director for Full Gospel Church International Europe all the European branches in Spain, here in the UK, and in Italy, where there are about four branches. He's the overseer there. And in the person of Reverend Adigulati. Reverend Adigulati, I salute you. I know that you're in Ghana at the moment. And I know that maybe uh, where you are, you might not be able to speak. But I salute you, sir. Um, that of all the things that you have to do on a Sunday, all the way, all the way down to West Africa, the motherland, you decided to share fellowship with us. And also, I want to take this time to also welcome also Pastor Ben, Pastor Ben uh, in our midst. I want to thank you uh, very much for your time. I always want to also recognize the men of God because, you know, men of God, the Bible says that we must give honor to those who labor in the word and in doctrine. The Bible says they deserve double honor. The double honor actually means double standard technically. That's what I mean. I want to honor him at this moment. Thank you very, very much, um, Pastor Ben. I hope he's still there, or maybe he's probably he's dropped. He was there a while ago. I think in Ghana, the connectivity issues um, is the problem. Let me also welcome our little sister Pauline, all the way from Ghana. Um, I know you're very, very busy, but you do make it a time to come. And also, I want to also welcome uh, also Beatrice, um, all the way from Germany, Beatrice. Um, from Germany, praise God, who, who happens to be um, the UP's, um, I would say, niece, hallelujah. And all of you amazing saints, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you to the leadership in the person of Sister Nina, also Sister Jennifer, and Sister Hetty, 
I'm still waiting for Bobby. I think Sister Angela is busy and Brother Mark, I'm sure the job has hijacked him in a particular place. All right, so without that, I want to say that get yourselves ready as we go on a journey in the word of God. One of the things I do every time when it comes to service that, you know, I don't take service lightly. I, I always prepare myself, not because I am the one going to preach the word, but I take it as an honor unto the Lord. I have never done any service to God help us up. You know, I, I don't just stray into service. I know it in advance, so I prepare my heart, I prepare my mind, I look forward to it. I am very expectant when it comes to, you know, fellowship with God, because I will say that all the days of the week, I have it to myself in some sort. But when it comes to fellowship with God, we have sort of, you know, segmented it into a few days and a few hours, you know, and so I, I think that if I give honor to my work, whereby, you know, I, I know when I'm going to work, I know when, you know, the time to leave, I know when to log on, all of that is honor, and that is good and fine. How much more the things of God, God Almighty, who was here before any of these contraptions have been put into place. So it is critical that when a person is coming to church, you know, you come with expectation, you come with joy, you come with preparation. Even if you are not a preacher, you can pray a bit in the spirit to garnish your spirit and get yourself ready to be able to receive. For Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Shall we pray? Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I claim for everybody under the sound of my voice that they will grasp the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the accurate knowledge of Jesus so that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened so that we may know the hope of his calling, that we may know the riches of the glory of his inheritance which are in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards all of us who believe? And this power was demonstrated in accordance to the working of God's mighty power when he raised Jesus from the dead. And that this knowledge passes all knowledge so that we shall be saturated and conscious of this defeat of Satan done by Jesus, that we shall walk with it. Anything that stands in the way of us getting this revelation today, I completely dislodge it, whether it is in the form of personal private interpretation, whether it is in the form of denominationalism, whether it is in the form of being indifferent, whether it is in the form of pride or bigotry, whether it is in the form of traditions of men and women that have been passed on by generation to generation, but they have no significance, no bearing in what Jesus did. Father, I take away everything that is not of Christ, that only the things of Christ will stand. And I thank you for utterance, boldness, and revelation as we travel through your world. In the mighty name of Jesus. And then the saints say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Let us get into the study. I want to know can you hear me loud and clear? I want to make sure because I'm going to relay some nuggets and I need to make sure that my communication is crystal clear. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can I have a feedback? Okay. I like the thumbs up. Fantastic. All right. So let us get into the word of the living God. And please, this is a very, very technical topic. So pay attention, make notes, and write down, especially those Bible verses that are critical. You know, when it comes to the word of God, my attitude has always been the same. I will never put anything about the word of God. Never. I've never done that, and I'll never do that. I keep the word of God as a priority. 
I keep it always as a priority. When it comes to the word, I will never let anything take that place. So let us get into the word of the living God and continue on the topic of this. We are dealing with this topic here. What is the believer's inheritance in Christ? And we are dealing with part number six. So let us struggle. And I'm going to take my time because what I'm going to share today might not necessarily be happy clappy, but it is revelation. And if you are patient and listen to the whole thing, you will learn something. So let us be humble and learn. Sometimes in Bible studies, you have to unlearn to relearn. So I would say, put aside any theological trimmings or mindset that you have and let the word speak. Let the word speak. What is the believer's inheritance in Christ? Part number six. Let us take the journey. We said, what is the inheritance that the believer has received in Christ? Is it material things like houses, cars, mansions, acquisition of physical assets? It appears throughout the Christian world. It looks like this is all that Christianity is about. It's just about the things. And there's nothing wrong with the things because God created them. But we want to find out whether when it comes to the believer, whether that inheritance are material. Because the material things are already here. We said the word inheritance basically means the following. Heritage, legacy, succession, patrimony. They all have to do with words of passing over something valuable onto someone. Something valuable. But in terms of technicalities, those words there, heritage, legacy, succession, patrimony, sometimes it has to do with a person having to die first before that thing that is valuable will be passed on to the person. Now, these things can be in the form of physical property, titles, birthright, or traits. We say that basically, it is something passed on to another legally by way of succession. We also said that to understand the concept of inheritance, we have to look at what is called in Bible interpretation, the law or the principle of first mention. For you to understand anything in the Bible, you have to look at where a particular word was used in the first instance, and that law or principle in Bible interpretation is called the law of first mention. So in the law of first mention, in the Jewish concept, when we talk about inheritance under the Old Testament, it is to receive an irrevocable gift, take note, with an emphasis on the special relationship between the benefactor and the recipient. Okay, so like you know, my dad and myself, you know, and under the Jewish concept, you know, he gives something to me which he cannot take back, or nobody can take back. Once he passes it on, it becomes my bona fide legal inheritance. But let us now move away from the Jewish concept and let us come to God. Now, unlike human benefactors, the one who gives this thing to somebody, in the biblical sense, God doesn't die. Yet, he passes on eternal inheritance. So, question we are trying to find out, so what is this inheritance? And we are on a biblical journey to find out what that inheritance is. So, we read Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and dominion. Why? For you created all things. How? By your will. We said that word will in the Greek translation is design, plan, purpose, 
they were brought into being and were created. That means when God was creating planet Earth, he had a design, he had a plan, he had a purpose. Then God was creating the earth, he created everything around that plan, design, and purpose. So he went also into Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 in the New Testament. In him, the word in him means in union with, in union with, or joined with. In him, we also, speaking to born again Christians in the church in Ephesus, we were made, look at that key word that has popped up, God's heritage, God's portion, and we obtained an inheritance. Question, I am born again, you are born again. He said that when we receive Jesus, we obtain an inheritance, something passed on to us legally. However, since I received Jesus in 1981, on the day on that campus of secondary school where I was, where I received Jesus, I didn't receive any land. I didn't receive any houses. I didn't receive any articles. But here, he said, when you receive Jesus, you obtain an inheritance. So we are on a journey to find out what is the believer's inheritance. Philemon, chapter 1, verse 6, in the New Testament. Philemon of Philemon. And I pray that the participation and in a sharing of your faith may produce. What he's talking about here, the word participation is a Greek word, koinonia. Koinonia, or fellowship. He's saying that as we have fellowship with the Father, as we have fellowship with Jesus, as we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the word fellowship means communion, not communion that we drink. Common union. Common union. We have something in common. We are united by a common cause. We are united by a common purpose. We are united by a common reason. We are united by a common target. That is what we read in Ephesians. When in him, we obtain an inheritance. So there is a commonality. There's something common between Jesus and you. There's something common between me and Jesus. There's something unique that makes us know that you and I, we have an identity with Jesus. And that is what he's talking about here in Philemon. And I pray that the participation, as you become aware that there is something you share with the Father, there's something you share with Jesus. It's an ensuring of your faith. That's the word, ensuring of your faith. What should you do? What should you do? Why do we come to church? When we fellowship like this, when we pray, and the sharing of your faith, that's the word, may produce, may produce and promote full recognition, full recognition and appreciation and understanding. So recognition, appreciation, understanding, how? And precise knowledge, not haphazard knowledge, not miss, miss and get, no, not trial and error, no, not anyhow. There is a precise knowledge. That word in the Greek is epignosis. It is a knowledge that cannot change. It is a knowledge that is specific. He said that when you begin to fellowship in prayer, fellowship in the word, fellowship like we are doing now, his target by his spirit is to bring to you precise knowledge of what? Of every, not some, every, not some, every good thing that is ours is already yours. You don't have to fight for it. That is ours. How? In our identification. 
with Christ. You see the word identification, same like the word fellowship, something common. Praise God. So we want to find out is that every good thing of Christ is in the believer. Did you notice? He didn't say land, houses, as important as there. There's something beyond that. So let that go on. So the Heavenly Father and his spiritual family, because we are put together by a bond. Revelation, the revelation of father and family is a vital truth of the word of God. So far, we said from parts one to five, we have established that God had a dream, had a plan before the foundation of the world. His eternal dream was to have a spiritual family in whom he will dwell with forever. We also established that the inheritance that God had dreamt of giving are not material things like gold, silver, mansions, or wealth, as important as they are. Why? Because these materials of houses, gold, silver, diamond, they are available to sinners and believers alike. However, in the Old Testament, before the death of Christ, men in Adam were spiritually dead. So in the Old Testament, God, or the writers rather, used material things to communicate this desire of what a father and his family concept. So material things in the Old Testament were also used to communicate the value of the spiritual inheritance we have in Christ as superior to material things. Let's read a few Bible verses in that regard. Let's read a few Bible verses. Let's get into some few Bible verses to really bring about that idea of how the Old Testament was communicated. Look at Psalm number 78. Psalm 78. Just to badness or emphasize that the Old Testament had material things, but they were a mode of communication of what we shall receive spiritually in Christ. So look at Psalm 78, Psalm 78, verse 1. Give ear, all my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to my words. Look at verse number 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. Look at that. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will open my mouth here in a parable. That word parable is the Hebrew word mashal. M-A-S-H-A-L. Mashal. It means instruction by numerous examples. It means analogy. It says, I will utter that says of old that hide important to now when David said this, he wrote it with a background. He did not just write it in absentia. He wrote it. The background to the book of Psalms are the writings of Moses. All the Old Testament writers had a reference point. They didn't just write. They wrote from a reference point. And the reference point are the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, those first five books. So when David said, I will open my mouth in a parable, I will speak dark sayings, dark sayings. That means I am using some elements. His mind was on Genesis. Genesis. That means in the book of Genesis, there are some things there that will require clarity. Even though you see them in the physical, but the target of the writer was for spiritual things in Christ. That is why I said, I will open my mouth in a parable. So most of the writings of the Old Testament, they are in kind of coded language. They are in parables. So if you read them and you take them literal, 
you will miss the point. He said, I will do what I will utter that says of all that hide important truth. So the Old Testament writings, they hide an important truth. They hide an important truth yet to be explained. Verse 3, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Who are the fathers? Is he talking about? He's talking about Noah. He's talking about Abraham. He's talking about Isaac. He's talking about Jacob. He's talking about Samuel. He's talking about the patriarchs of the Old Testament. That means in the writings of David was a combination of visions and oral tradition. Visions and oral tradition. The information was passed on to him by word of mouth. But no explanation was given. That is why he said that in the Old Testament writing of Moses and the prophets, they hide an important truth why men were spiritually dead. Then, he, then Jesus repeats the same thing in Matthew chapter 13. Remember, Jesus did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the New Testament. In the time of Jesus, the only books of the Bible that were available was were only Genesis to Malachi. Don't forget that. Genesis to Malachi. So Genesis to Malachi was Jesus' Bible. And all his preaching, he picked up from there. That tells us something. That the writings of Moses and the writings of the prophets are very significant to understand the New Testament. The problem that people have is that they read the Old Testament literally. So look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Let me go to Matthew chapter 13. Here. Then the disciples came to him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? Do you see that now? So parables in the Old Testament we saw in Psalm 78. That means that the, the mode of communication of the Old Testament, they are parables. So you cannot take them literal. I'm going somewhere with this. Follow me carefully. Otherwise you will miss the point. Follow me. So now, he said, why do you speak to them in parables? So that means Jesus is not the first person to use parables. Why is he continuing with parables? Because I said the Old Testament are parables. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew is Mashah, but the Greek or the Aramaic is parabolic. They mean illustrations. And look at the reply of Jesus in verse 7. And he replied to them, to you, it has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Who is the secret and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? Jesus. He is the one standing there. That's what he's saying. I am here. The mystery of the Old Testament is Christ. The mystery of the Old Testament is Christ. The secret of the Old Testament is Christ. I am I am. The mystery of the Old Testament is Christ, which the Old Testament people did not know. So he said, to you, disciples around me, whilst I'm here, it has been given to know, to be conversant with the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. One day some disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, how do we know when this kingdom is coming? Then Jesus answered them that if somebody tells you that, no, there is a kingdom, or no, there is a kingdom, that is not true. For the kingdom of God is among men. Here I am standing. Whereas in the Old Testament, kingdoms were lands, they were what territories, but spiritually, kingdom, which is the word basilia in the Greek, is the realm of a royal rule, a territory of a royal rule. So physically, as a parable, they use lands, but spiritually, it was pointing to me, Jesus. As a realm of rule. See that? He said, the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it has not been given. Why? Look at verse 12. Look at 
at verse 12. We are talking about what is the believer's inheritance in Christ? Material things. And we are establishing a point that the Old Testament used material things to communicate God to be available when Christ comes. Verse 12. For whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given. And he will be furnished so richly, so that you have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he, he has, will be taken away. Look at verse 13. This is why, or this is the reason that I speak to them in parables. Why? Because having the power of seeing, 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 they do not see. What is he talking about? Israel and having the power of hearing, they do not hear, nor do they grasp and understand. So, in the Old Testament, it is mystery, not mysterious. Mystery means there was no explanation. So, when people go to the Old Testament, they only see land, kingdom, houses, gold, diamond. Then they end up and saying that the inheritance of the believer are physical things. But he's saying that under the Old Testament, they saw land. But land is land, but they do not see land as a spiritual communication. They heard about things. But when they heard it, they did not understand that it was about Christ for spiritual strong. And so they saw things, they heard things, but they could not understand. Why? Because all of people before Christ were spiritually dead. So he said in verse 14, in them indeed is the process of fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, he shall indeed hear and hear, but never grasp and understand. And you shall indeed look and look, but never see and perceive. The seeing is not physical sight, but the ability to perceive behind the words the connotation of those physical elements. Glory to God. Amen. Now let us see how Paul puts it before I begin to now fly. Let's look at Paul. So I've given you, I've given you David in Psalms. I've given you Jesus. Now let us come after resurrection. Let us come after resurrection and see what the apostles did. Let us come after resurrection. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. From verse number 8. I'm only just establishing that one of the errors in our understanding of the Bible is that we think everything is literal. We don't know that it has got a fixed explanation. So look at Paul repeats the same thing. David said parables. Jesus said parables because we are spiritually dead. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. None of the rulers of this age or world perceive and recognize and understood this. For if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. That means he's talking to Jews. And the Jews had Genesis to Malachi. But as they read through Genesis to Malachi, they could not see what it was meaning. They couldn't cut the meaning. They couldn't grasp. That is what Jesus said. That is why the communication style in the Old Testament is parables, figures of speech. There are euphemisms. There are all kinds of management in there. If you take them literally all the time, you will miss the import. That's why I said, if they have understood what was said there, they will not have crucified Christ. Look at verse 9. But on the contrary, on the contrary, as the scripture says, did you see that? As the scripture says, yeah, as the scripture says, ladies and gentlemen, in context, this word scripture is not referring to Genesis to Revelation. Because when Paul the apostle 
not this, none of the books of the New Testament had been put together yet as the canon of scriptures. So what Paul says, as the, but on the contrary, as the scripture says, he is referring to Genesis to Malachi. Follow me. Look at, look at what he's quoting. Look at it. Something similar to David, something similar to what Jesus said. Look at the next sentence. What I have not seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God had prepared. Where is his reference? Genesis to Malachi. What is he referring to? Is he referring to the fact that, oh, the eye has not seen my BMW X7. He have not heard the house I am going to build in Florida. Oh, it has not even entered the heart of man. The kind of real estate holdings that I am going to have. That cannot be. That's not what he's talking about. Remember, he's speaking in context. He's speaking in context. That's why he said, as the scripture says, so there is a reference to Old Testament writing. He said, what I have not seen. Remember what Jesus said? Seeing, they cannot see. Hearing, they cannot hear. Meanwhile, he's talking about the mode of communication. They were reading Genesis. They were reading Exodus. They were seeing lands. They were seeing property. But they could not understand the purpose of why they were seeing those things. That's why he said, I have not seen. Who is his audience? Jews. 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 Who is his audience? Jews. He said, I have not seen. They, the Jews, under the Old Testament, ear has not heard. They were hearing prophetic statements because the books of the Old Testament were read audibly. The books of the Old Testament were read audibly on Sabbath. They read them verbally. That is what they did in the Temple of Solomon. Every Sabbath, they read it audibly. So they were hearing it, and somebody was reading it on parchments, but they did not know what it was referring to. Because the verse before said that if they had known, they would not have crucified. That means those scriptures were referring to the crucifixion of Jesus. If they had known, they would not have crucified. But as the scripture says, I have not seen those verses as referring to Christ. Ear has not heard that those verses refer to the crucifixion of Christ. All that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love him. Now that translation is erroneous. It is for those who God loves. Have we established that? So now let's get back into this then. Look at verse 10. Then Paul brings a climax. After he said, Old Testament, verse 10, yet to us, say yes to me, yes to me, God has unveiled, not going to, he has unveiled, Old Testament concealed, they read, they heard, they didn't understand, but after resurrection, he said, yet to us, after resurrection, God has unveiled, revealed. The word revealed is a Greek, apocalypso. Like you take a cloth to cover something, then you take the cloth off, then I can clearly see. That means their spirits under the Old Testament was dead, so it could not perceive. But after resurrection, in Christ, they are unveiled, so you see them for what they are. Yet to us, God has unveiled one to reveal how the by and through his spirit. Why? For the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring 
and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottom things of God, bottomless things under the Old Testament. They are ready, they could not be able to make sense of it. But the Holy Spirit has brought those things to the fore and things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny as under the Old Testament. But now it is clear. Come on. Glory to God. The believers in heritage. Now, with that settled, let us do some more work and bring it to a close. Zabai, the believers in heritage. Now that we understand that, let us do some more work. Now, I want to go somewhere now with this. So, there's a question. Let's look at this now. So, one example that we have is Abraham. Because God told Abraham to go to a land. So we want to find out if that was the intent of the Old Testament writing that it was a fiscal land. So Galatians chapter 3, 13 to 18. Christ, so now, now we, are, we remember that now after resurrection, the writings of after resurrection, they are the explanation to the Old Testament where they couldn't see here, here is the metaphor for understand. So the understanding of the Old Testament is in, uh, in the epistles from the book of Romans to the book of Jude. So what's Galatians 3, 13 to 18? If this is the light we was talking about that. It is revealed in these writings. Galatians 3, 13 to 18. Christ purchased our freedom. Not going to purchase. It has been done. Redeeming us from the curse of the law. Now, that word curse has got a very bad press among Christians. We hear the word curse. A lot of Christians don't know the difference between a curse and a spell. A curse and a spell. A lot of Christians confuse both. They think curse is spell and spell is curse. Though it is contained in both. But I want you to look at this word very well. Very well. The word curse here, see you are not cast. Curse. Let me show it to you here. Curse here, this word, is from the Greek word Aram. A-R-A-R. Aram. It means not to be accepted in this space. You are not accepted in this space. See that you are not accepted. It's like it's like you are not part of this league. You are locked out. So when he said Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse due of the law. What the law under the old testament meant that man did not have access to God. He said the law was our schoolmaster. So when he says that we redeemed from the curse of the law. That thing that stood in the way between you coming to God because of the sin of Adam, Jesus has taken it away. That place where we didn't have access by himself, look at that, becoming a curse for us, for it is written in the scriptures, curse is everyone who hands on the tree according to the law. Look at verse 14, very carefully. We are dealing with the believers' inheritance in Christ. To the end, that through their receiving Christ Jesus, listen from here now. Hey, <laughs> Labra Here they go. To the end, that that is when you understand what Jesus did, and you receive it, you believe in it. You receive. They are receiving Christ Jesus. The blessing promised to Abraham might come upon Gentiles. Now wait, 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 wait before you jump to conclusion. What is he referring to? Don't forget about the parables. So, what were the things given to Abraham? He, he told he gave me land. Yes, yes, no, it was land. What else? Remember, Abraham was already rich before he met Jehovah. If we read in Genesis chapter 11, chapter 12, the Bible says, and Abraham, A B R A M, before he became Abraham, Abraham, A B R A M. That is before, before the covenant. The Bible says he was very rich in silver, in gold, in cattle, 
he made seven. So Abraham, before he met God, was wealthy. So if the blessing promised to Abraham, it's like it's like this. Let, let, let me bring it into today's context. It's like it's like Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos. And then they are already rich. And I mean, this guy, Jack Bezos, is the first person to reach the trillion dollar mark in terms of in terms of his general outgoings and profit. First person as a company, trillion dollar, not even a country. <laughs> you see that? Then God says, I am going to give you a blessing. Now, something doesn't add on. Something does not add up. No, 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 no. No. The man has everything. He has banks. He has houses. He has investments. He has hit the trillion dollar mark. So that is exactly Abraham. In Abraham was the Elon Musk. Abraham, before he met God, was the Jeff Bezos. Abraham was the Bill Gates of the time of the land of the all of the Chaldees. So the blessing promise cannot be material. It must be. What are you talking about? What, what, what gift are you going to give to a trillionaire? I want to ask you. If it was Jack Bezos' birthday, what, what BMW has got it already? What are you going to give to him? That will be so valuable. Nothing. You can't give him anything. So obviously, the blessing promised to Abraham might come upon the Gentiles so that through faith we must all receive the realization. Look at it. Look at it. It's right there. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you here at this point that the blessing, the inheritance is the Spirit of God. What is more precious than the Spirit of God? Except your eyes are not open. I am not done. You have got a few minutes to go. Let's go. Okay, so let's, let's leave that side. Let's leave that side. Now I want to come to something. So now another question we need to ask. Was Canaan the promised land of the inheritance God was referring to when he spoke to Abraham? So let us investigate if Canaan was truly the promised inheritance. Let's, let's investigate. So let's go to Genesis 12. Now in Haran, that is all in the eastern side, you know, around Iraq, the Lord said to Abraham, look at the name, Abraham, 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 not Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. He was an idol worshiper. He was an idol worshiper. His father, Terah, they worshiped the moon. They were moon worshippers. So we can say, there are some form of astrologers. They were pagans. He said, go for yourself for your own advantage. I went from a country. Please, this part that I'm going to wear, I'm going to land. I am not going to land. Follow me here, Kev. Follow me. Because it appears that this is where the argument is. I mean, up to the people are saying that, well, the present land in, in Israel is the one that, you know, that's where God was referring to. Follow and you will learn. <laughs> God has left that area <laughs> thousands of years ago, but let's watch. Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abraham, go for yourself for your own advantage away from the country, from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Take note of the word land, 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 land. The land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished and be a blessing, dispensing good to others. Watch this. And I will bless those who bless you. Now, now the language here is a little bit misleading. The word bless means to be accepted in a space. The word cares means you are not accepted. You are not given access to that same space. So when he says, I will bless you, what it means that I will accept you as part of me. Adam failed. Adam failed. But you have believed. So once you believe, 
what Adam missed, you can have it. What was Adam's miss? Relationship with God by his spirit. But Abraham believed, so he got it. You see that? So he said, and I will bless those who bless you. What does he mean? When you do this, that becomes the blessing. And anyone that follows your example of believing me will also be accepted. You see that now? Then he goes on, and curse him. Now, be very careful about this language. Because this is what we say that, you know, God cares. God does not curse anybody. That's what the curse is talking about. That's, that's a very bad translation. Right? The word curse is arah, which means to do what? To deny access. How did Abraham get access? He believed. What happened to Adam? Adam did not believe. So he was denied access. Curse. You believe, you get access. Blessing. See that? You don't believe, you don't get access. Curse, that's the meaning of that way. So he said, and curse him who curses you. What it means that if you disbelieve, that means what? Those who don't believe, they will not get access. And he went on and on. So Abraham was what he parted as the Lord had directed him. And Lord, his nephew went. Abraham, Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lord, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the persons. Sermons that they had quite in Haran and they went forth to go to the land. Please take note. That's a very important word. Take note very, very carefully. Take note. The land of Canaan. Because that's what we're trying to find out. When they came to the land of Canaan, verse 6, Abraham passed through the land to the locality of Shechem, to the oak of Terebin, tree of Moreh, and the Canaanite was then in the land. So there were people in that land already. Verse 7, then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I'll give this land to your prosperity. So Abraham built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Verse 8, from there he put up his tent pegs and he parted to the mountain. Follow me carefully. There's something in there that you can miss. If that was the land, why didn't Abraham then stay there forever? You see from there, he pulled up his tent pegs and departed from Canaan to the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west of Ai or Ai on the east. And then he put an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of God. Abraham journeyed. <laughs> if, if, if Canaan is the place of promise that God is referring to, why is he still continuing the journey? And Abraham journey on still going towards the south. Then again, now watch translation and watch word. The word land, pay attention. We are talking about the believers' inheritance in Christ. It's a fiscal thing. We have already debunked that. But then there's another one that is a conundrum for people. Then why did God tell Abraham to go to a land? Remember, we said the Old Testament is a parable. He uses fiscal things to communicate spiritual things. So what? The word land in Genesis, in Hebrew, is Eretz. E-R-E-T-S. For those making notes. Eretz. Look at that. Look at the meaning. This word, Eretz. It does not refer to a physical inheritance, but a people or a nation. <laughs> Do you see that? Now, the English language has done us a disservice. So if you read it, land, your mind will go to Canaan, physical. But that word, land, refers to not a physical inheritance, but a people, a nation. A people. Remember, God's dream was family. God's dream, family. God's dream, Spiritual family. Okay, the next meaning of the word Eretz, in an ETS, which is translated land, it also refers, it also refers prophetically to God putting his spirit in a man after the resurrection of Christ. Oh, my goodness. So if you had read it as land, land, physical, you will not see the import of this when you go by the English language translation. So it refers to two things. A nation 
in whom you will put a spirit. Ah, you didn't hear that. How about that? A group of people in which you will put a spirit. But as at that time, because Abraham was spiritually dead, Jesus had not yet come. He used the physical land. And I'll show you what. To communicate this dream. Our mistake, we stay with the physical. We are not able to see the spiritual. Look at that. So let's look at those two concepts and I'll close with it. Land as a people, a typology, land referring to these people, a spirit will be in them. So let's look at a prophecy in that line in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 25 to 28. The prophecy of a land, but this land is used to point to a spiritual nation, a spiritual people, a spiritual family. Look at this. Ezekiel 37, 25. They shall dwell in the land in which your fathers dwell, that I gave to my servant Jacob. You know, Jacob became Israel. Remember that? Right? So Jacob. They and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David, David's name has come in here as well, shall be their priest forever. Verse 26. I will make, watch, I will make, when he said I will make, from that standpoint in Ezekiel, Jesus has not come. So from that point, it is in future tense. But now, it has been fulfilled in Christ. So it will no longer be future tense. But from Ezekiel's standpoint, because it has not yet been done, the tense will be future. So this verse has been fulfilled when Christ resurrected. Look at that. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will give what blessings, what the blessing to be accepted. And multiply them and will set, look at this, look at this, and, and, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. What is the meaning of the word mist? Mist is all English. M I D S inside them. My sanctuary, my tabernacle. Don't we have a Bible verse like that in the New Testament? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that your body is the temple, is the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit of whose world in which God dwells? Do you see that there? See that? You get that now? You see, so that prophecy has been fulfilled with the believer. Let's get the second one. Ah, yeah, yeah. We go on. Then the nations shall know and understand and realize that I, the Lord, who set apart and consecrate Israel, Israel for holy use. When, when, when my sanctuary at that time it was not ready yet. When my sanctuary shall what shall be in their midst, how long? Forever. And Jesus spoke about that about the Holy Spirit. He said, it is expedient in John 16 that I go away. For if I do not go, the, the comforter will not come. And when he comes, the spirit of truth, he shall abide with you forever. Glory to God. Come on, that. That is land as a nation. Let's take the second one. Ezekiel 36. <laughs> land, a rest. A rest, he are eating as God's spirit in that nation. Ezekiel 36, 24 to 28 is the prophecy of a land used to refer to the union of God and man by putting a spirit in the one who believes. See that now? Look at Ezekiel 36, 24 to 28. Look at this. Same thing. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land, land and rest, 
Look at verse 25 very close. Very close. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. All the metaphors. And you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. Metaphors. What is the background of this book? The book of Genesis. Why is he using the word unclean? The sin of Adam. Didn't Jesus use the same word water? Look at John chapter 3. He said, unless a man is born of water, which is the spirit. See that? Then the woman at the well, whom he met, the Samaritan woman at the well, he said, if you knew who is speaking to you, you would give him this water to drink. For at the water that I give will be like a well that will do what? Well up to everlasting life. So the image of water that Jesus used took it from the Old Testament. That's the same thing Ezekiel saying. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols that clean, cleanse you. Look at, look at, look at the same. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the connection. Look at the connection. Water means spirit. Spirit, water. Verse 26. A new heart. A new heart. The word heart is not biological heart. It is the, it is the Greek word cardia. K-A-R-D-I-A. We get the English derivative, cardiology. But what, what it means that the heart is the center of action of the human body. So what he said that I'll give you a new spirit. Once again, prophesy. It is fulfilling God. I'll give you a new, a, a new heart. I'll give you a, a new world spirit. Where will that spirit be? Where will that spirit be? Where will that spirit be? Will I put where? Within. 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 And I will take away, I will take away what? The stony heart out of your flesh. What is the stony heart? The old spirit of man and the Adam. Because he could not follow God's ways. That's why he used the adjective stone. Stone is not pliable. It's not bendable. It cannot follow God's ways. The same thing. That's why he said, hearing, they could not hear. You could not bend them. Seeing, they could not see. They could not be bent. So he said, no, 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 no. A time is coming. I'm using land. But what I intend to do is something spiritual. See that? And give you a heart of flesh soft. It can know my way. But and I will put, look at it, look at it, look at the emphasis always. They all spoke the same thing. And I will put, I will put my spirit within you, within you, within you, within you. But we use land and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall heed my ordinance and be there. And you shall look at see, see the question. And you shall dwell in the land. So now the land is the spirit. The land. Is the spirit by using it again? And this time, this place you will dwell there. Look at that. And you shall be, you shall, are they not his people already? 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 And you shall be my people. About thought they were Jews already by the by the by covenant of circumcision. So he cannot be referring to this, this nation. He's talking about another nation. Oh my goodness. Hey, brother. So we said the epistles are the explanation of the Old Testament. Now, let me land and finish with this, and then we are done. But I cannot, I cannot do the Ezekiel and leave out the epistles. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. The epistles are the explanation of the Old Testament. Look at the way the writer of Hebrews explained this Abraham thing about land. If the land that we are talking about is the land of Canaan, the writer of Hebrews brings it to the fore. Hebrews 11, 8 to 10. Urged on by faith. What is faith? The, the voice of God on the promise. When he was called, isn't that Genesis 12? Isn't that Genesis 12? You remember Genesis 12? Can you see a symmetry? Same thing. Obeyed and went forth to a place which was destined to receive as an inheritance, watch, 
and he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. Verse 9, prompted by faith, he dwelt as a temporary resident. <laughs> how, can he, how can he dwell in a, in a, as a temporary resident when they say that is the land? In the land which was designated. Oh, I can't hear in the promise designated of God, though he was like a stranger in a strange country, living in times with Isaac and Jacob. But Isaac and Jacob were not there yet. So that's another figure of speech. The Greek word is suklerenimos, participants of the same promise. Isaac came later. Jacob came later. But the same promise was communicated to them. That's why he said, living in times with but when Abraham was there, Isaac was not there. Jacob was not there. However, they enjoyed the same promise. See that now? Fellow, look at the word, fellow heirs of him of the same promise. Look at them, they still on sight. <laughs> that means, hey, Katalia, Blaya, I cannot contain myself. When Abraham got to the land, he said, no, 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 no. <laughs> this, is not, this is not it. No, God, I, I get you. This is not it. This is not it. Look, verse 10. For Abraham, he was waiting expectantly and confidently, looking forward to the city. The word city is the Greek word polis. P O L I S. We get the word metropolis. A city. What a physical city. Look at it. Which has fixed and firm foundations. Whose architect? And builder is God, not man made, not, not this one. Look at that. So, look at that. So, what, from one man, though he was as physically good as that, they have sprung up, sprung descendants whose number as the stars of heaven, countless as the enormous sons of the sea. So, so, most people are looking at physical Abraham, London, and Israel. God's intent is a spiritual family. You and I God is God. Believers here in UK, believers in Ghana, believers in Nigeria, believers in Kazakhstan, and believers in South America. That whole are the innumerable. And more yet to come into the glory of Christ. He said in his word in Hebrews that he has brought many sons unto glory by his resurrection. To show you that that land was not the place, verse 13, these all die. Abraham dies. Isaac Dies. All died and died controlled and sustained by their faith. But not, look at them. But not, but not, but not, but not, but not. But not. They go to the land. God was saying that I was only using that as a figure. But not having received the tangible fulfillment, fullness of God's promises. But you haven't seen it and greeted it from a great distance by faith. <laughs> oh, verse 16. But the truth is that they were yearning for and aspiring to a better and more desirable country. That is what? That is what, folks? That is what? That is what? The country, the land, what? Heavenly one. <laughs> oh my goodness. That arrests my case with that glory to God. Now, in conclusion, so what was the purpose of the land in the Old Testament as an inheritance? God was trying to teach them something. Land is temporal, so it is the temporal versus the everlasting. The land is temporal. All those ones are temporal, they can disappear. Worthless versus priceless. See that? No matter how the land is, you cannot quantify it with the price of the spirit. So he was using the Old Testament to bring about pricelessness. Perishable versus imperishable. The gold can perish. The silver can perish. How can God, who is an eternal being, give you perishable things? As an inheritance, humans give perishable things to humans because we perish. But God is an eternal being, He does not give perishable things to eternal things. He's eternal. So, how do we conclude? 
First Peter 18, 21. You must know. So that is the knowledge that God wants you to know. You must know, recognize that you were redeemed, ransomed from the useless. Hey, hey. Listen, no matter the splendor of what somebody has physically, it cannot in any way match what Jesus has. Come on, the Bible says that when the queen of Sheba had saw the wealth of Solomon, when she entered the palace, she passed out. But listen to Jesus' commentary about Solomon. He said Solomon was the richest man of the East at that time. But Jesus' commentary, Ayabaya, makes a nonsense of Solomon. He said that Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed or dressed like none of these flowers of the field. That means Solomon's wealth is not even equal to the daffodils, Kabaya. It's not even equal to the rose. It's not even equal to the magnolia. It's not even equal to any lovely plant. But look at what Jesus added. He said, but a greater than Solomon is here. Glory to God. That's what Peter said in First Peter. You must know, recognize, that you are not redeemed, ransomed from the useless, fruitless way of living, inherited by tradition from your forefathers. You see, he relates to Old Testament. Not with corruptible things. The less such as silver, as gold, but you were purchased. Glory to God. <laughs> I was purchased. Hey, you were purchased. If it was not before, then some people have it more. So, Cartier, Cartier of France, they have it more. If it was not, they like have most. You got some having more, but I have good news for you. You were not purchased, but you were purchased with the precious blood of Christ, the Messiah, like that of a sacrificial lamb, without blemish, without spot, without blemish, without spot. The Spirit of God inside you. There is no quantifier, there is no exemplary one, there is no status equal until your eyes are open. To begin to see that Jesus in you. So Paul puts it this way in the book of Colossians, chapter one. He makes it clear for you to understand that this mystery in time past that was not known, but now it has been revealed, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And until a believer mind is open to that understanding, your service to God will be wishy wash. When you know the world is throwing things at us for us to accept that the things of the physical they are an end into themselves. But Peter here says, You were not redeemed with corruptible things. Silver, gold, but with their precious blood. Now, the word precious blood is not homoglobin. Blood is a metaphor for his life, his whole life. Is there anything bigger than God's life? Is there anything bigger, better, stronger? That is why one of his names in the Old Testament was El Shaddai, Kabadaya. The double breasted one, is there anybody stronger, that power strong than the Spirit of God in the man, in the name of Jesus? That struggle that you are struggling with is because you have not understood, you've not understood that the Jesus in us is not Jesus who walked the face of the earth. That was Jesus in his incarnation. If you look at Jesus in his incarnation, you will be misled because he was limited in that body. We are talking about Jesus, the resurrected Lord, the prototokus, the corporate headquarters of God Almighty, the one that sits above the waters, Maya, the one that death could not hold in captive. The Bible says death could not hold in captive. He shut it. He completely blended all of hell. He finished Adam's sin. He finished Satan. He finished the demons. He finished, and it is spoken in the book of Philippians. That he thought, how this mind that was in Christ, who taught himself not robbery to be with God, but 
God made himself a Lord of protection. I want himself to the death of a cross. Whereby God had highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth, to the glory of the Father. Glory! We serve the massive God in Jesus' name. And everyone shall say, Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Glory. Not with perishable things. So when things are not good, live like that. Let the guy who's God, what is God, let him move on. Don't worry about that. There are a better thing. The people of the world will struggle to get things. I'm telling you, by you, you know what you have. You know they can take 10 years of struggle. What did it take 10 years of labor? You can get it in just a year. Because it's only perishable things that you have bought. You are superior. So we give you more praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you glory. Oh, my Sakataya. Oh, my God, Sakataya. I am here. Ah, with this knowledge, I don't envy anybody. I don't envy the world five million years. But I have something that they don't have. They might have it in the fiscal now. That's not a problem. But they don't know what to do in crisis time. And if they pass away from planet Earth, unfortunately, they have missed out on the best of life. But we have the fullness of the spirit. All of the spirit of God inside you. That's what the song says. The spirit of God in a man is more precious than gold. It's more precious than silver. May your eyes be open to that in 2022. That you latch on to Jesus. I don't know Jesus academically. It's not Jesus academically. It's not Jesus intellectually. It is Jesus by revelation of the Spirit in the epistles. Not intellectual Jesus. Not academic Jesus. Not theological Jesus. But the revelation of Christ. Revelation. That's why Philip see himself. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Stay in your spirit. Amen. And may they speak to you. Amen. May we give you a focus in the spirit. Knowing that our labor in the Lord will never be Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. I hear this song in my spirit. Let's sing it. We might not all know the song or know the words, but you know, as, as much as you are familiar with it, let's sing it. We give you glory, Lord, glory, Lord and we honor you. you. We give you, give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. you.
Oh, you are worthy. Oh, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are the one Jesus. Oh, indeed, he's wonderful. Indeed, he's glorious. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your word. This word is sharper, sharper, sharper than two edges sword. I believe it's piercing down into your souls, into your marrow, and dividing into asunder and putting things right in your mind. Hallelujah. Correcting all wrong minds that you have concerning the word of God. We thank God for his inheritance, that Jesus is our inheritance. Amen. The spirit the spirit of God in you is the hope of your glory, which is your inheritance as well. We thank Jesus for this wonderful word. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you are here, if you are new here today, we have a culture. You know, everywhere you go to, whatever organizations and whatever, you know, uh, groups, everybody has a culture. Every organization has a culture and churches have their culture. We also have our culture, meaning the way we do our things. So when we hear the word of God and we are blessed so much, you know, we're already blessed, but the word of God comes and will pop it up. So when we hear the word of God, we don't just sit down, we sing, we shout, we jubilate. So we have a word we say. When we, I say, what a, what a word, you shout back to me and say, what a blessing. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. I'm going to say, what a word, and you shout back like thunder and say, what a blessing. What a word. What, what a blessing. blessing. What a blessing. Woo. Blessing is weak. It's weak. It's weak. It's weak. Let's shout it. What a word. What, what a, a blessing. blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, hungry. If you're hungry, don't worry. Just get some biscuits. If you're, if you're thirsty, just get some water. What a word. What, what a, a blessing. blessing. What a blessing, what a blessing, hallelujah. What a word, what a word, hallelujah. God is good all the time. And all the time. God God is good. good. It's good. Yes, I like your spirit. I like your energy. Hallelujah. You are an evangelist. I like it. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. I'm so excited. I can't even put this microphone down. I can't stop talking. You know, my family, my brother says I talk too long. And I tell them when I'm excited, my wife become longer. So I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to give our offering. And we're going to have Sister Hetty. She's on duty today to take us the offering as well. And then we get to the announcement. So please stay with us. We have special announcement to give. And after that, we're going to welcome all of you once again. If you were in a building, we'd have gone around and hold each other and just dance and sing this song. You know, what's the song? Hold one another. Yeah. Hold somebody. Together again. Yes. So we're going to sing it. Oh, okay. Right. Hold yeah. somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him that you love them. We're going to do that. We're going to do that after all. Tell them yeah. that you love them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you need us in that song when we finish. Okay. So Put that... your hands together and pray right. or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's time for us to give. Uh, God 
so loved us that he gave us his only son. He is the perfect example when it comes to giving. So we are going to do what our master did by giving, giving our substance. And the substance we give is going to be used to further the ministry, to do things, to preach, to spread the good news so that many souls can be saved. And that is ministry work. So let us begin to think about how we can bless <laughs> the work of God. And here in our church, what we do is we have a PayPal link where you can give. So the web, the, the link is uh, on the page at the moment. It says HTTPS um, www.paypal.me forward slash FGCI London. And you can make your offering or your love gift through that link. And if you have problems with the link, what we advise is you contact pastor or pastor's wife, Lady P, and then she can give you a bank account details where you can transfer the, the gifts into, and then we can use it for ministry. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray over our offerings, please? Father God, we just want to thank you Amen. that we are blessed because we have you living Amen. in us, so God. Amen. We thank you so much. That's because you have blessed us and you have taught us to be a blessing. We are doing that, oh God, to further your ministry work. Amen. Even as we give, Lord, let this, oh God, go very far to be a blessing to many. And we pray that those who could not even give anything, Father, we pray that, Lord, you will continue to let them know that they are blessed. Even though they haven't given, they, have, they are blessed and they have, because they have you living in them. So they should see themselves as blessed people. And next time when we meet, they are also going to give to the glory of your beautiful name. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So now let's just take the announcement and then we just, you know, have our greetings and Interactions, yes. Take us through the announcement society. Today is your day. Yeah, okay. thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah. So the announcement number one we have here is our Bible teaching days. We do have Bible teachings from Mondays through to Thursday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. And it is through our Zoom link, which never changes. So we can share it to as many people that we can. So that's between 12 and one, they can also join and listen mm -hmm. to the unadulterated teachings of the God that we serve. Um, announcement number two, please, Lady P. Okay. Uh, hold on. The, the first one, there's some changes. We're not going to have it on Fridays anymore. Uh, it's Monday through Thursday. So, yeah, because of the next one, we have the Bible um, school coming on on Friday. So, it's, it's going to be on Thursdays now, Monday to Thursday. Thank you. Okay. Let's take the second one, please. Yeah, we have. Prayer meetings online, the same link again, the same Zoom link on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. So everyone is invited. Once again, let's share the link 
so we can invite as many as we can. Okay. Our next announcement is um, we have started a youth service and I'm privileged. I was part of the service today and last week and, I, and it's, it's, it's a very good one. So we please, if you have friends, families, um, and any, any, anybody you know who has a youth in his or her life, please invite them to also join our youth service. And it comes on every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Any youth from 12 years upwards to 19 years are admonished to fellowship with us. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> the next announcement, um, Lay Bible School for the Dickens and Dickinesses. So excited. It will start from this Friday on the 14th of January, 2022, from 12 noon till 1 p.m. This is for a period of one year to equip them as upcoming leaders for this ministry. For this ministry, any pastor or leader who wants to grow in the accurate understanding of the word so that they are better equipped can join with the Zoom link we use always. Thank you very much. These are all the announcements for the week. God bless you all. Bless you too. Bless you, Sister Hetty. Thank you so much. Well done, Sister Hetty. You had, you had your little assistant there to help you through, so that was wonderful. Wow, wow. In regard to the youth as well, you know, the service is going on well, but we, we hope to extend it, you know, because, you know, there are, um, all the ones among them, then the 30 minutes is not enough for them. So we hope to expand the time. I, I invited a friend's daughter to come in and um, she said that 30 minutes is too small for, for her. She's about 15. So we're going to extend the time, you know, maybe from 12, um, 2 to 1. And then we intend to start the children's ones, those under 10, you know, like you said, is your kids, those under 10. We can do this for about 1 to 2. And then the other older youth continue from two to one, and then you know, you no know, one to two, and then we have thirty minutes break, and then the main service start at two thirty. You know, we're going to come out with the time to start for the low youth. We are looking for uh, online, you know, resources. We have we have local ones that we use, but we're going to look for online resources for the younger ones that attend. So when we gather all those you know, information, we're going to start it probably in February, trusting God that we're going to start that in February. And I've always been with the little ones. So, you know, I'll be with them. And I would like mothers as well, who we'll have experience as well, with part of us. So if your, if your children's join, just be with them as well to control them. Amen. That's been wonderful. Wow. I've enjoyed the service. Have you enjoyed it as well? Yeah. If you enjoyed it, let me hear, let me hear a shout. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, it's, 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 don't worry, you, we're going to let you go and have your food, your, your abenqua, your all that you prepare for this afternoon. Hallelujah, amen. It's been wonderful. Sister Ruth, you're welcome. I don't know which is a Ruth. Are you new? Is it Sister Ruth Athiapa or Sister Ruth Chega? Or a new Sister Ruth? Please let us know. <laughs> it's your tea, please. Oh, Sister Ruti, Sister Ruth Chega, God bless you so much for you know fellowshipping with us. You've always been with us. So God bless you for today. It's been wonderful. You know, when we start the younger ones, we will we'll consult you because I know you take care of your the, 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 the youth, you know, the children's service at your end. So you're going to be part of this. We are taking you by force. Amen, Sarut. <laughs> Pastor Ben, oh, you are welcome. We are excited to have you always with us. Thank you so much for, you know, being part of this this online uh, ministry, online church, you know, church, we call ourselves church without walls, you know, because we are the body of Christ. We carry God's presence with us. 
So when Christ comes, he's not going to come for full gospel. He's not going to come for Pentecost. He's not going to come for Christ apostolic or action. And it's coming for his church. You know, so let's prepare. We are all one. Amen. Amen. Ella, Amen. Oh, thank you, Pastor Ben. Ella, you're welcome to join us. So Celestine, good to see you. Very soon we start hearing your voice. You're going to be part of the of the of the duty of the men and women of duty as well. So start preparing yourself, Sister Celestine. Yes, Randy. Thank you so much. You were in the youth and you're still here. That's amazing. You got double for your for your blessings. Hallelujah. Daisy, welcome. Sister Angelina. Wow, you are welcome. We can't wait to have you on duty very soon, lady. Let us know when you are ready, please. Mrs. PK, hey, my buddy, good to see you. Wow, welcome from Ghana. Thank you for honoring my invitation to join us today. Amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, you are present for gospel chair. Amazing. Okay. Freddie, Sister Celestine, thank you so much. Sister Nina, Belby. Wow, you look great in your black. Amazing. Keep calm there. Keep calm there. You have been Sister Jennifer. Wow, how bright to be. My goodness. You started shining already. <laughs> amazing. You. you look so beautiful there. Sister Hetty, I love your hair. It's amazing. You look wonderful. But up here, amazing. Hey, Sister. Wow, Mrs. BK, it's good to see you. You're looking so beautiful today. Wow. Please, I know you brought me something. Birmingham, I'm coming for it in Birmingham. Or oh, you better post it before it's too late. We'll talk later. But up here, you are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you to join us. Mrs. BK, you know, greetings to your, to your hubby and the kids. Let, you, let your hubby join us next week and, the, and your boys as well. Our youth, amazing. And you're going to bless us with a song next time when you join us. With your beautiful voice. Amen. All right. We love you guys. It's been amazing. We're going to have to take our meditation. Sister Angelina, God bless you. Let's have Pastor Ben. I'm going to hand over to, to Pastor as well. Let's take the, the benediction. Before we go, Sister Jennifer, you're going to lead us in that. After the benediction, you lead us to sing that song. And then since we are online, you can just use, use your hand wave, 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 use your emoji and wave, 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 wave. And let's sing that song before we go. After the benediction, amen. Hallelujah, praise God. And um, Pastor Ben, can you please give us the Christian prayer? And then I'll just do the benediction, please. Pastor Ben, if you're available, sir. We thank you, Father, for once again, another time unveiling your spiritual truths to our spirits, feeding us and equipping us by your spirit. We are so grateful for unveiling these mysteries, which have been hidden for ages and generations, mm. but now it's made manifest through even the accurate preaching of your gospel. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this unique privilege and opportunity. And we continue to pray that you let your grace increase upon the minister of the mm -hmm. gospel to continue to make known these mysteries unto us. Yes, Lord. Because according to your word, you said you gave us pastors, preachers, evangelists for the perfecting mm -hmm. of the saints, for the work yes, of Lord. the ministry, yes, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes. You said, so we all come to the knowledge of the truth. Yes. Unto a perfect man and unto the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Yes. Lord. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and mm. fro mm. and carried about by every wind of doctrine and the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby yes. they lie in wait to deceive. So, Lord, we are grateful for this unique opportunity that you continue to bless us with these precious words full of power and full of your spirit. Mm. And we pray that these words will continue to strengthen us with might by your spirit yes. in our inner man. Yes. And that we will grow up in you in all things. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Pastor Jenga was spirit filled, spirit led, and spirit directed. Now, unto him that is able to keep him from falling, may he be able to guide him in the steps of the righteous. You are the righteous in Christ. You have an inheritance in him. Walk in that inheritance. Walk in that strongest throughout this week. And the days are meditate on it such that the revelation of Christ will be so large on the inside that nothing else will be Thank you so much. I love you all. And have an excellent, 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 excellent Sunday. Hey, Sister Jennifer, let's go with the song. Hold somebody, tell him that you love me. Lift your hands it's together. Um, so lift your hands, just use it, you know, use the emoji sign and just lift your hands there. And let's, if your camera is up, you know, just wave your hands and let's just sing the song. Mrs. BK, join us with this song with your beautiful voice. Let's go now. And can Mrs. BK lead us? Yeah, can, can she lead us? She's got a level. If not, I can do it. <laughs> okay, Mrs. BK, lead us. If you know that song, hold somebody, tell him that you love him. Lick, you know the song? Your microphone is not on. Your microphone is not on. Hold somebody. That's right. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you love them. Mm -hmm. Lift your hands together. Yeah. And praise the Lord. Let's hear you louder. <laughs> Mrs. Vicky, bring it out, bring it out. <laughs> Come on, let's go on. Your microphone, your microphone. Somebody, oh, Lift your hands together. Again. Oh, 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 and pray. Oh, 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 week. Let's get connected to the week. Be blessed. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye, everyone. Bye. I love you all. Bye. 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 Bye.